August 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Song of Solomon, Chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament, Solomon's Most Excellent Love Song. Oh, how I wish you would kiss me passionately, for your lovemaking is more delightful than wine. The fragrance of your colognes is delightful, your name is like the finest perfume. No wonder the young women adore you. Draw me after you, let us hurry. May the king bring me into his bedroom chambers. We will rejoice and delight in you. We will praise your love more than wine. The beloved to her lover. How rightly the young women adore you. I am dark but lovely, O maidens of Jerusalem, dark like the tents of Kedar, lovely like the tent curtains of Salma. Do not stare at me because I am dark, for the sun has burned my skin. My brothers were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. Alas, my own vineyard I could not keep. Tell me, O you whom my heart loves, where do you pasture your sheep? Where do you rest your sheep during the midday heat? Tell me, lest I wander around beside the flocks of your companions. If you do not know, O most beautiful of women, simply follow the tracks of my flock and pasture your little lambs beside the tents of the shepherds. O oh, my beloved, you are like a mare among Pharaoh's stallions. Your cheeks are beautiful with ornaments. Your neck is lovely with strings of jewels. We will make for you gold ornaments studded with silver. While the king was at his banqueting table, my nard gave forth its fragrance. My beloved is like a fragrant pouch of myrrh, spending the night between my breast. My beloved is like a cluster of henna blossoms in the vineyards of En Gedi. Oh, how beautiful you are, my beloved. Oh, how beautiful you are. Your eyes are like doves. Oh, how handsome you are, my lover. Oh, how delightful you are. The lush foliage is our canopied bed. The cedars are the beams of our bedroom chamber. The pines are the rafters of our bedroom. I am a meadow flowers from Sharon, a lily from the valleys. Like a lily among the thorns, so is my darling among the maidens. Like an apple tree among the trees of the forest, so is my beloved among the young men. I delight to sit in his shade, and his fruit is sweet to my taste. He brought me into the banquet hall, and he looked at me lovingly. Sustain me with raisin cakes, refresh me with apples, for I am faint with love. His left hand caresses my head, and his right hand stimulates me. I adjure you, O maidens of Jerusalem, by the gazelles and by the young does of the open fields, do not awaken or arouse love until it pleases. Listen, my lover is approaching. Look, here he comes, leaping over the mountains, bounding over the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the window, peering through the lattice. My lover spoke to me, saying, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come away with me. Look, the winter has passed, the winter rains are over and gone. The pomegranates have appeared in the land. The time for pruning and singing has come. The voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree has budded. The vines have blossomed and give off their fragrance. Arise, come away, my darling, my beautiful one. Come away with me. O oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the hiding places of the mountain crags, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Catch the foxes for us, the little foxes, that ruin the vineyards, for our vineyard is in bloom. My lover is mine, and I am his. He grazes among the lilies. Until the dawn arrives and the shadows flee, turn, my beloved, be like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountain gorges. God, this was the book that I was kind of dreading having to record. <laughs> because it gets even more intense here in the next couple chapters. Plus, there's so much debate as to what this book is actually about. Some people think it's a simple, passionate love story. Um, and that completely makes sense because you created love. You created relationships and, and a husband and wife coming together. And it completely makes sense. Other people talk about how this is um, a reflection of your love for us. That if, if all this passion between two humans can be there, can you imagine how much more our God in heaven loves us who created us? And a lot of people believe that about this. 
A lot of other people believe this isn't just two simple people who've fallen in love, um, shepherds, uh, but it also involves King Solomon getting in the way and wanting her for his harem. To me, it, it honestly doesn't matter any of those or any of the other ways that people in the theology world have come to think of this. Because for me, the most important thing is this is your word. You intentionally included it as one of the books in the Bible. And this book, amongst the 65 other books, is important enough for you to have included it. And I think as with all the rest of the Bible, depending upon what is happening in my life at certain times, when I read the Bible, whether it's this book or one of the other uh, chapters or books in the Bible, I know that your words will speak to me. It's sort of like on Sunday, if you're listening to a pastor who you're using his gifts to speak to us, every single person in that congregation, as long as they're open to it, will hear what they need to hear out of that sermon. And all of us will get something completely different. That's how amazing your word is. So I think what is important is to remember and not argue about (laughs) what Song of Solomon is, but what it means to us at this particular time. And and for me, uh, chapter 2, verse 7 is what speaks volumes to me right now. And that has to do with where my life is right now as a single person. um, And it talks about, I adjure you, O maidens of Jerusalem, by the gazelles and by the young does of the open fields, do not awaken or arouse love until it pleases. And I think that's one of the hardest, without a doubt, the hardest thing to do in a relationship. That that first and foremost, waiting for the person that God would put into your life, if he's even going to put somebody into your life. But if that person comes along, making sure that they are a man of God, not just somebody who picks up his Bible once in a while and goes to church once in a while, but just passionately loves God, um, who is running a race towards that relationship with Jesus just as hard as, as fast as I am. So first and foremost, that has to be there. Second, working on the relationship through a sense of purity. And, and we do here in these first couple chapters, this sense of purity uh, come through, especially in, in the verse that I just read, that to not create arousal in that relationship before the time is right to move on to different levels of your relationship of course waiting until the marriage to actually consummate that that marriage and and it's so incredibly difficult to do because you're passionately falling for this person as we hear in this uh, gorgeous selection of poems and You just want to be with them. You just want to touch them. Uh, And yet there's a sense of purity that needs to be there. That sense of honor in this relationship that that God brought us together. And because of that, that natural humbleness that should come before us in dealing with this relationship. That thankfulness, um, that blessing that God put the two of us together to make his kingdom more that there does need to be honor and respect and and purity in that relationship and uh, to not awaken or arouse love until that time occurs when the two of them are actually uh, married in God's eyes. God, I just pray today for everyone who's in a relationship prior to marriage that they will understand the gift that they've been given, that for the man that he is to be honorable and respectful of this daughter of God that he's been given to court. And the same thing for her to not tease and torment him um, sexually so that he can continue that honor and respect. And the same thing for her that she's been given this amazing man of God in her life to help lead potentially a family and she should honor and respect him and be very clear about her purity and her boundaries and not push those or arouse them until the time is right. God, I just pray for everyone in those relationships that they will hold tight to the incredible gifts and promises and blessings that you've given us. That you created love, you created passion, you created marriage, and they are all to be done underneath your guidance all to be done with your will in mind. Not our will, because I know what would happen if it was our will. 
God, I just pray for all these relationships. And if they are relationships that are supposed to go forward uh, under your will, then I just ask that you bless them, that you watch out for them and you help guide their steps so that their relationships, their coming together, would definitely make your kingdom more and bigger. God, I thank you for these words, even though they're sometimes hard to record without blushing a lot. Um, and I just love that to everyone listening to this video that they're going to speak different things because of the different places everyone is in, in a relationship, uh, whether with you, with a significant other, or as a single person. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <music>